Mm. Oh, I guess we're live. <laughs> Stream zone out for a second there. Hi, uh, welcome. Thanks for joining me. If you're watching this live, great. Thanks for being in. If you're watching the replay, which if you're watching on YouTube, you will be watching the replay because this is on Facebook Live first. Um, comments will be responded to after the fact. So you can comment live or after the fact, I'll respond. Okay, let's start off with who I am, what I'm about, and why you might be watching me. Uh, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, and I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And every day I tend to have a different topic because there's so much to talk about in the area of love and relationship, so today is no different. So this is number 378. I ain't keeping track, so it's over a year's worth, and I'm going to go for the 400 milestone next month. Um, it's kind of easy by now. And today's topic is um, inspired by a couple of things, and I'm going to speak to the second part in a moment. But the title of the talk today is Dating is Easy, so why is having a real relationship so hard, and what to do about it? And I mean, the obvious part is, of course, dating is easy, there's less commitment, but it's more than that. And I want to get into also why relationships with a lot of people are a lot harder than they expected and what to do about that. So hopefully this will make sense by the time I finish. <laughs> so thanks for joining me. Thanks for being with me as always. And again, I invite your comments along the way and I'll hopefully be able to respond to them before I sign off. And again, if you're watching the replay, if you have comments then, I will respond afterwards because I'll be notified when you comment. And by the way, speaking of notifications, apparently there is a way you can get notified when I go live. So you actually can watch me or be, be notified when I go live. I just said that. So you can see what's going on. So for the future ones, if you haven't seen all 378 already, because again, there's number 378, you can catch those then. I'm also putting in all my re in all of my replays now, I'm putting the link to my YouTube playlist, which has all of my play broadcasts together. So you watch them there in one, one binge-worthy collection if you want to do that too. So shall we get started then? So again, topic today is dating is easy, but real relationships are hard. And I'll just say dating is easy. Why is a relationship so hard and what to do? So first of all, with the and I've talked about and I talked around this topic in the last two or three broadcasts. I talked about uh, numbers games and other things too. So you want to watch my previous broadcast from this week, which will be 377, I think 376 and maybe 375 as well. I don't remember the titles off the top of my head, but I know they're in there. So this one, um, let's just say it this way: with the plethora, the abundance, the smorgasbord of dating um, resources out there, apps, sites referral services, everything else, it's extremely easy to get on a date. Like, duh, no, it's no brainer. It's the truth of what it is. The other part about why dates are so easy is because you can always walk away. Dating, the way I refer to it, is the courtship period before you get into a relationship. In fact, it's prior to courtship because for me, what I, I would suggest that dates are is like a test drive before you commit to the journey of discovering this person is the one you want to be with. Um, I have a personal reference about dating being something that is before you kiss. That's my personal reference. Some people have other ones. Some people think dating includes sex. That's your spectrum. But relationship, regardless of those criteria you may have, relationship to me is that long-term commitment to one other person. And I'm speaking monogamy in this conversation because that's my focus and my knowledge and my, my area. If you're on a polyamory, this, this may have relevance for you. I can't promise that. Covering all the bases. <laughs> And this applies to gay or straight, so we can include both on the conversation. Okay, I think I've checked everything off my list. Yes, okay, let's keep going. So, dating as a um, taste test, appetizer, if you will, of different people is a fun way to explore what you're looking for. It's the wrong approach, as I mentioned before, and if you want to find more about that, watch my previous broadcast. I'm not going to say because, no, I'm going to stay true to this topic. I don't want to keep detouring, I'll well never get to the point. But real relationships are challenging because for most people, they're not ready for the work, but I want to go somewhere else, so I'm seeing another level come through. This is the piece I want to talk about as well. Let's talk about the soulmate conversation. Soulmates are something that have been banned around a lot, and I personally don't subscribe to the, when you find your soulmate, everything's gonna be perfect, and I'll explain why as I get to this. Soulmates, which is which you have to be in a relationship to have, really, if that's what you're looking for, are not the ones that make everything so much easier. Oftentimes, a soulmate's gonna make everything harder. Not the sense of out of, out of spite or out of um, um, 
being a protagonist, it's more about the fact that they're going to reflect back to you everything you are, good, bad, and indifferent. So you're going to see yourself in the mirror. Um, in fact, this is I'm spinning off of from a friend, uh, friend Amber, who just got married um, to her love, JP. Um, she posted a thing about soulmates being harder, and I want to speak to that part of it because she's right on about this. Although personally, I believe that the challenge of relationships is not limited to soulmate connections. It's just heightened for soulmate connections. Because any relationship you get into, romantically speaking, is going to create friction for you, like sandpaper. In fact, um, Lisa Nichols, one of my favorite teachers, talks about how relationships are often gifts wrapped in sandpaper. And in some ways, that's what relationships can be like, especially if you don't know what you're doing. And yes, relationships are sometimes things you don't know what you're doing in, because first of all, most of us didn't go to school to learn about relationships. Did you? Because <laughs> I didn't. I have been as an adult, I've studied a lot more things, teaching courses, etc., etc., that taught me about relationships. That's why I know what I know. That's how I wrote my book and everything else I do. But as a, as a student of, um, in high school, they may have had a sex ed um, class, but it wasn't about relationships relating connection and communication type skills. Most, class, most schools didn't have that. So being in a relationship is going to require more of your participation, more of your effort, more of your ability to grow than just dating. And this is the what to do about it, so I'll get to that piece too. First of all, the biggest, I must say mistakes, one of the biggest errors in approach that people make is when something gets them upset, they look at their partners being the cause of it. And of course, you've never done that, have you? Yeah, right. Every, I've done it myself, so I know we all have. Is that we we have we get upset about something, we think it's our partner's fault, and we blame them and judge them for doing that. This is the path to destruction in a relationship, to be blunt. Um, it is the path of least growth, least availability, and it also doesn't get you anywhere. What to do as a solution is when you get upset in your relationship, first of all, own your participation in it. Let me say it this way. If something happens that involves your partner and you get upset, solving what happened won't get done more easily by you being upset. Kind of obvious, I know. But you forget this when we get, when we get up to and we're upset and, and infused with, with anger and everything else, it's hard to be rational. So I'm trying to give you the idea now so when you do get that moment, you'll go, oh, I remember Barry said this. Here's the thing. Take the emotional energy of that upset somewhere else, outside the relationship. And I don't mean at somebody else, I mean take it offline. Whether it's to vent it out by yelling in a closet full of clothes, into a pillow, journaling, um, freeform writing, which is one of the things I teach in my work, or just going out and like getting an axe and cutting down wood out of a tree. I mean, whatever it is that gets you physically exertion driven to get the anger energetic out of your system, that's a good start. Now, you may still have the upset, but it won't be emotionally charged, and this is where things can shift. And I'm going to talk about other things, by the way, not just about upsets, because <laughs> I'm realizing we're straight to that part. It seems to be the resource we go to. So let me just finish off this piece. When you have an upset with somebody else, yes, they may have done something that triggered you, but the key thing is what they did triggered you. It sounds so obvious. That trigger is where the work is. What they did may or may not have relevance ultimately because if you don't have that trigger anymore, what they do doesn't affect you that way. So backtracking from the anger and upset that you've defused, detuned, and released moves back to, okay, so what was it that triggered me in the first place? Find out what that is. It may be the way they said something, or the way they judged something, if that's what you took it on as. It may be something else entirely. When you can get clear about what it is that upset you, then you doesn't, it doesn't need to upset you anymore. And part of that work is to start realizing that trigger doesn't, need to, doesn't serve you. Actually, I've got a whole other piece that just came through. Okay, let me bring it in this way. In the work I do with my clients, a lot of the work we, we work through is what happened from our history. Because our history dictates our relationship patterns. I've talked about this before, so if you haven't watched my broadcast, I'm not going to cover it again here, but there are some, there's some deep talks I've given on this in the past couple of months about the history that drives our choices in relationship. So I'm putting it on the table as a given, so you have that. In that work, a lot of that is to backtrack and see what it is that we were wired with as we were growing up, as the way we respond to things. And so if something upsets you as an adult, 
in a relationship in this context I'm just talking about, it's quite likely that that, that trigger point comes from something way back in your childhood, or at least in your teen years, that was something that was imprinted upon you because of a defense mechanism. Now I'm, gonna, I'm giving you a, a, a Cliff Notes version, so you may miss some of this. And again, if you don't understand this, please go back and watch my previous broadcast about um, your history, your sexual relationships, and um, what was the other talk about? Shoot. You know what, watch my, watch my videos on my website. There's three part videos on my website, which is barryselby.com. Click on that, there's a three part series and then one talks about history. So that's where you find out about that. So getting back into this <laughs> discussion to get this point across, so you get it clearly. That pattern that happened when you were a teenager, or as a young child, that was in, 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 um, imprinted upon you, 99.9% .9 of the time, the aspect inside that is driving that behavior is actually in service to your safety. I'm trying to explain this in simple terms, but it's gonna get complicated fast. I'm attempting to make this singular. So here's, here's the piece. When you, when you figure out what it is that your, that part of you is doing to protect you, you can actually shift, shift its uh, wiring so it doesn't keep doing the same thing. Its ultimate, call, ultimate service to support you, support you. But how it's doing it may be from a child, childish response that you still do as an adult. We get upset and throw a fit. It doesn't need to do that anymore. Now, I'm not gonna break it down any further than that, but if you wanna find out more about that, reach out to me. I can show you how to get through that and work through those past um, automatic triggers. It is a big challenge in relationships because back to the beginning, relationships are a great place for your triggers to be revealed. Again, the mirror part I talked about. It's something again that my friend Amber posted in her post on the wall about this, so I'm sort of rewiring that one. When you're in a relationship, because in relationship, here we go, when you're in a relationship, that's the most intimate place you're usually with with another person. Surprise, surprise. Now, I don't mean sex. I mean the walls come down. The vulnerability shows up, the transparency is there. And any of those hidden agenda things you've got inside yourself, any of those um, locked away programs, beliefs, wirings of upset and stress and feelings will tend to get rubbed on, like sandpaper, as I mentioned. If you're willing to do the work, and relationships are work, as I mentioned, to heal those wounds, because in some cases they are wounds, then you can have an amazing relationship. Key thing. Ideally choose a partner who's doing this as well so you can grow together because if you're not, it's a challenge. That's a whole other conversation which I'm not getting into here. But by doing this, by choosing to grow in yourself, you become a better person, more whole, less wounded, more complete as you don't carry on that wounds, those, those gaps in your psyche as it were, and you can be a better partner. Now, sometimes that relationship partner you're with won't change to grow with you. And that's in my book, I talk about this as well. And so the growth you've made may grow you apart from that person. For some of you, that is a distressing experience because you thought that was the one perfect person in your life. But if they haven't moved, not willing to do the work, and they're still trying to trigger you because that's their wiring, not yours, that's your exit indicator. That's your time to say, you know what, I'm complete. Not against them, but for you. And this is the thing about my work in relationships. It's always about doing the things that support you and being better at being you. Being with a partner is a bonus. That's an additive. Not, act, not addictive, additive. So I'm watching the words in my head there. And so you grow into a place of being more whole, more full. And then when your relationship, and this is the key, you don't become so entangled and enmeshed with that person so you don't become codependent with them. And codependence I've talked about before as well. It's a whole other topic I've talked about. And... Um, Suffice to say, if you are reactive to things your partner does, you're codependent. You're actually in the middle of the stuff with them. Sylvia, so what about, how about that partner that doesn't want to grow? Well, as I said before, I said earlier in this broadcast, if you are in fact in a relationship where you're growing and evolving because of what's happened and you discover for yourself that these patterns no longer work for you and you, res you resolve them, you heal them, you transform them, if your partner doesn't grow to match you, or hasn't already grown ahead of you, which you're catching up with them. That happens occasionally as well, by the way. There's no reason for you to stay there. Doesn't matter how good the sex is. Now, if you've got kids and stuff, that's a challenge. I understand if you're a, if you're a marriage and there's certain things, it's a challenge to be in a relationship. It's okay, it's okay Sylvia. So yeah, you watched them at the beginning as well. There's a bunch of stuff I set up on this before I got to this point. But let me just give you an answer directly to this point. 
because I didn't cover this earlier about this, if you're already in a great deal of connection with that partner because you have business together or romantic, sorry, or marriage together with family, with kids, I don't, it's not as easy to go, yeah, just leave. However, if the other person's not willing to grow and you've asked them or you've invited them or you've encouraged them, it's not much choice. If you don't want to stay in that, su that suffocating place, because it will feel suffocating once you've grown, finding a way to complete with them which may mean shifting the relationship into friendship, which is possible after marriage, it is possible, to co-parent with the kids if that's the paradigm you're in, or to separate the business in a way that's healthy. To do it from a place of growth is ideal. And if your partner hasn't grown, they might not be willing to play that game. Because for them it looks like a game, it doesn't look serious. You are being serious. But choosing to separate is the, perhaps sometimes the best choice you can make for yourself to honor and respect who you are. But that's, with due consideration, this is, not, this, is not automatic, this is not my automatic response to say to you if they don't work. But if you're in a relationship where the other person is not growing and there's, not, and there's no other baggage or um, attachments in the relationship, it's just the two of you, walking away from that relationship may be healthier to do. Yes, I understand. I have had clients who have gone through that where their partnership was suffocating because there was no growth. And, and yes, the word suffocating was the right word, yeah. Sorry, I need to repeat what you're saying because this replay will be on YouTube and people won't know what, what was said here. So, yes. So, hopefully, you answered answer your question, Sylvia. Um, so, having said that, to finish up recapping what I was on track with, I can remember where I was. Oh, uh, yes. I talked about relationships bringing up all your stuff. You can also bring up all your good stuff as well. I talked about the, the upsets and the challenges. Let's not f forget the good stuff, too. In a growing relationship where you are choosing to come in, you may have been holding on to your goodness because you've been afraid to reveal it. And that partnership can be rubbing on the friction of those fears that are in the way of you stepping into your truth. And this is the whole big conversation. And this is what I'm gonna drop this one in now, although I may do a whole broadcast on this later on. The possibility of refining each other to become the best you, you your partner you can be, the best use you can be, I can say that way, that way is so inspiring and so powerful. I've watched people who grow together where the relationship, I, I'll talk about soulmates in a second again. I'll talk about soulmates at the beginning, but I'm gonna come back to that in the end. That their partnership, their aliveness, their growth together is fueled by each other. In fact, they become more and more authentic, transparent, whole, loving, expressive, real because of their partnership than if they were single. That's possible too. And when you have conscious people come together, awake people come together, woke people, if you want to call it that, awakened people who are doing their work and discovering their work, but the meek people are also doing their work. That's a much healthier place to bring together a relationship too. So this thing about doing the growth when you're in a relationship, I highly invite you to look into doing that if you're single because it makes you a better choice for a partnership down the road. I just jumped a lot of stuff out there. Let me see what else. Oh, soulmates, that part. Soulmates, personally, I just want to speak to this because I, I, I tend to I distill, distance myself from it. Soulmates, there isn't a one soulmate. There's not one soulmate for you. I've talked about this before and I'm just going to put it right in here because it seems to fit. Some of you believe that there's a one true soulmate for you on the whole planet and it's great. Okay, if there's seven and a half billion people on the planet and you believe in God, you have a problem. Because God will not be that cruel and punitive to have you look through seven and a half billion people to find the one person you love. That ain't fair. So, joking aside, I believe soulmates because I believe that we are all connected and sourced from the same thing, which is spirit, which you, what do you want to call that? You can in fact be soulmates with anybody if you go deep enough. So my perspective is, perspective is soulmates are something you can discover, you can grow into, and you can become more clear about with your partner. All things being equal, you'll choose someone who you really like and enjoy being around, but the depth of opening you can have with that person, you can start revealing soulmate qualities with each other, which can be wonderful. However, if you're holding out for that one true soulmate to show up, you may be old, wilted, and tired by the time they do show up, if that's the person you're looking for. I know personally I've crossed paths with three of mine who weren't available for a relationship, or the right gender for that matter, but I recognize the connection that moment because there was some inner knowing. So I know soulmates exist, but I don't believe there's one on one. So if you're in the, in your, in the club of believing there are soulmates out there, great, but make sure you realize there's multiple. And also make sure you realize that you can grow into that with somebody who you're close to and really like as the depth of loving opens up. And as I said at the beginning, soulmates often are not the most um, laissez-faire. 
<laughs> That's what it came up. A phrase that came up. Intense the sense that most people who are most soulmates are going to be ones that we're going to get in so deep with you because it's the other thing. Soulmates going deep, really deep, and you get connected. And this is not codependent, this is interdependence. And they see you as you really are. And they'll call it forward in you. And if you're not ready for it, it's going to piss you off. And that's what that puts you back at the beginning of the, beginning of the, of the um, broadcast. So, back, if you're watching now, please go back watch the beginning. If you watch from the beginning, you know what I'm talking about. I think that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Put all some pieces together for this. So here's the summary, the bottom line, so you get where I'm getting to in the whole thing. Being in a relationship is an opportunity to face yourself in the way you, in your life, the way you are. Oh, comic coming out, sorry, Western, what you say there. But when you tune yourself to your truth and then vibrate that from your being, you wouldn't have to look through billions of people. The law of attraction would choreograph your meeting, right? Um, I won't argue with that. However, I'll give you a different opinion. Because <laughs> I understand the law of attraction working. I was listening to Abraham Hicks this morning and talking about this. Is yes, you vibrate at the frequency of what you really want if you're, playing, if you're doing the law of attraction centric focus. However, there's an assumption in that conversation that the person you're looking to attract is doing the same thing for you. Think about that one for a second. So you're out there vibrating on a frequency of what you want to attract, and you know the person you're looking for out in the world is out there somewhere. And that person, that divine partner, is, do, is doing the same thing for you, all well and good. But if they're not, then what? If they're not, see the thing is, your focus has to be that that person will be that. Because again, law of attraction works. So I'm talking to the point of view that we have multiple soulmates in my conversation, in the context I was speaking to. So you wouldn't have to look through billions of people, correct? If you're clear in your vision that your partner is available and lives in the same town, and you're bumping to each other some convenient place, and you recognize each other when you see each other and all these other things you make your list of what you want, then yes, it's quite possible that you, you have spirit, law of attraction, choreograph a meeting, even though you did it yourself by asking for it. So for me personally, to respond to that, Western, I would say that it, this doesn't um, conflict with my perspective. <laughs> um, because the reality is that we have to do the work ourselves. This is, the, this is probably the biggest overarching theme of the whole thing, is that being, dating is easy. You can go on a date and have a great time, bad time, whatever it is. But moving to a relationship, if you really want to get into a relationship, a real relationship, then you've got to face your own demons, face your own stuff, face your own issues. And when that happens, the law of attraction doesn't always help. Because you've got to face what's inside them. Because the thing about, oh, okay, let me do this one. Let me throw this one at you. And Weston, thanks, I appreciate the agreement. Law of attraction, just to throw it on the table since you asked about that, is working all the time. Transparently, it doesn't matter what you're thinking. So if you're focusing on what you want, or you're not focusing on what you want, it's still working. So in a relationship, when you're getting upset with your partner, the law of attraction is going to keep that happening until you change. So the wiring's got to shift internally. It's always about doing the work on yourself. So Western, so you believe there are multiple people that you can match with. It's about the fine tuning, I suppose. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. And that, that is what I'm in informing and, and um, suggesting here. But the recognition, again, back to the beginning, is that relationships are going to stir up your stuff. Be ready. Be willing and be confident to go into that journey and do the work because it will change your life. It will inspire you, possibly. And it will also make you clear about what you're choosing, maybe less than what you really want. And that is a whole other topic. Okay. <laughs> this went a lot deeper than I planned. Thank you for watching. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for the input. And thank you for the conversation as well. Um, this is one of my daily broadcasts. Um, these are called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. But as you can see from this one, quite often they are um, relationship-centric or love-centric. And they're not necessarily one gender or the other particularly. So in this case, it's for everybody. And again, gay or straight, this would apply to. You know, I did say it's for monogamous relationships primarily. As polyamory would be a whole different conversation. And it's not my speciality, so I'm not putting that in here. If you haven't seen my other broadcasts, I will afterwards put in the link to my YouTube playlist. You can see all of them there. But if you want to watch them on, watch them on Facebook Live, so you can see, or, sorry, on Facebook in the replay. So you can see all the comments. You can find them on my business page, which is barryselby.author on Facebook. Um, you can watch the replays on YouTube, which I, again, place will be playlist will be in the comments later on. If not, you want to go straight to uh, my message, my uh, channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is messages, messages from the Masculine. And also on my website where I put everything else, so you can get on my website, catch my video series, 
that talks about history. That's one of the three videos in the three keys video on my landing page. If you go to my homepage, you'll find it there. To sign up for it there if you want to get that. Um, on my video blog on my website, again, website is barryselby.com. On, um, on the video blog is where these will show up. Also, if you're looking for love in the wrong, all the wrong places, to quote that song, and you want some help in this area, I do invite you to check out my uh, complimentary discovery session. It's my gift to you. Um, it's 30 minutes of my time where we can talk and get clarity, get some guidance, and if my work serves you, we can talk about how you can work with me. That simple. On my website, again, barrysilver.com, click on the left-hand side of the menu bar is the Let's Chat button. That'll take you to the uh, cons consultation screen. You can sign up there, plenary information, and book a time. And I think that's it. Yeah, my book's on my website, um, my coaching, my stuff's on my website. So hopefully this makes some questions, give you some value, some insights, some thoughts. If you have questions after I sign up, I'll respond to them in the comments afterwards. And again, um, try this on for size. That's your homework, by the way. I do give homework every time I do a broadcast, so this is another one of those reminders. I tend to go on, by the way, at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. That's my general plan, so if you want to catch me regularly every day, make sure you tune in at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And or there's some notification somewhere on the screen, you click on it to be notified when I go live next time, so you can make sure you get informed when I go live again. So your homework is to consider this for yourself, where you can open up to more loving, more openness, more insight, more um, joy in relationship. And from that, everything can open up. Again, if you want to reach out to me, you know where to find me. Thanks for watching this broadcast. If you, think somebody, if you know somebody should watch this because this is something relevant to them that you believe, feel free to share it with them. Um, but be warned, it might stir stuff in them as well. And with that, I'll see you again tomorrow. Tomorrow will be number 379. I have no idea what it's going to be yet, but I will be talking tomorrow with you. So thank you for watching me today, and take care of yourselves. I'll see you again then. Bye.